The real issue is, are you really ready to let your light shine, to let it come out and shine first upon you and then outward to all others to behold? Are you ready to let that light come out? Not about the shadow. That was a game. That was a cover-up for letting your true light out. And I put this forth to each and every one of you. On this light of the Merlin weekend, are you ready to acknowledge, to accept your own light now? I was just about to knock on the heavy wooden front door, and the door opened, and yes, indeed, it was El Moria. He was anticipating me. Not because I had sent him any letter by post, but uh, because we talked in the other realms. Who needs post when you can simply communicate telepathically? He knew I was showing up, and he invited me in. It felt so good. It was like now sitting in El Moria's home. It was like the cold and the brutality of the winter uh, simply went away. So yes, indeed, my journey had been difficult, but it had been with a purpose, and the purpose was to be here in Tibet, be here for the gathering of the Great White Brotherhood. And as I immersed deeper and deeper into the light, I felt uh, not a, a type of pressure, but it was a type of condensation. It was a type of bringing together that light tighter and tighter, even though it still had many rays, it still had many hues and colors, but it was being, being brought together tighter and tighter. It was becoming literally more discernible. And yet there was another flash of light. Everything went bright. And then returning back to the kaleidoscope, but each time this occurred, this feeling of more focus, tighter focus, not a bad feeling. In fact, it was in a way invigorating because it was so clearly defined and so sensually felt within my being. I say a genius is somebody who has extraordinary intelligence or creativity. They're ones who go ahead of, or at least away from, the pack. They're ones who are nonconformists, of course. They're ones who are different in their own right, who follow their own way eventually. Geniuses allow their inherent energies or talents to come through. They don't suppress or hold them back. It's interesting, in Latin, the origins of the word genius mean attendant of spirit since birth. Having the presence of spirit since birth. That's the original meaning and later became known as genius, having to do with, uh, particularly with intelligence, but a light from birth. They brought it with them into this lifetime. They brought that, that determination, that drive, that inner knowingness that they followed the whole time. Attendant in spirit from birth is what genius means. And I call Schomburg genius because you've had that light since birth. Over the years, there's been so much uh, that's come forth with the channels. And we, we sat in meetings with the staff and said, how do you distill all that? How do you... How do you bring that into something simple? We have a lot of new people coming in uh, yeah. these days, a lot of new people. A lot of you watching uh, right now have come into the Crimson Circle in just the past eight or nine months. And the question is always, where should I start? And that's, that's a tough one. We're so close to it that it, it's hard to say, well, start with this channel or that program or whatever. People just tend to dive in uh, somewhere and then make their way around. But uh, we've looked at it over the years, literally, and said, how do we distill this? How do we, how do we take our core concepts and, and put them together? And we spent a lot of time with the staff working on this, and I think we're, we're 
really, really, really close. We may do a little bit more distilling, but uh, Linda's going to be reading this as we go through. So, okay. So, Chumbrow realization number one I exist. I am that I am. Everything emanates from this. So, this is a basic one. I exist. Uh, Adamus talks about it all the time at the workshops. I am that I am. Everything comes from that. What about your greatest invention? Oh, my greatest invention would be me. <laughs> and I don't say that from an ego standpoint, but your greatest invention ultimately is, is you. Uh, it's what you do with your talents, your opportunities, your potentials. And I would truly consider it my greatest invention, uh, meaning that what was done and how I feel about Steve Jobs now uh, is good, is very, very good. And uh, I love that invention, but I'm also willing to let that invention go. It's not, uh, it's not tight and, and confined. That invention has expanded and expanded and, and expanded. Now, I know the, the meaning of the question is, uh, what were my favorite inventions? And I have to say also, I really didn't invent anything. And I was simply taking the technology at the time and taking the parts and pieces and putting it together in a more user-friendly way, something that uh, was also affordable to most people. You have a responsibility in this lifetime now to bring about the Christos physics, the fact that there are many, many realities, the fact that the very things that make up this reality, things like gravity and electromagnetics, are temporary and they're changeable, and that the, even the atomic structure is very, very changeable. The Christos physics talks about going beyond the, the current structures of the planet, which are basically mind and matter. Mind and matter. The Christos physics understand that consciousness is there first. Consciousness doesn't arise from mind and matter. It is what makes mind and matter possible. The planet is not going to hell, as some people are claiming. It's not going to fall apart. It will change and there will be disruptions along the way. But having carefully observed humans, the, the planet, nature for so very long, there is really only, uh, really only one path right now. This planet is on a, a path to this new human species, a path to uh, true divinity. And uh, the planet that you're living on right now, today, is going to be so very different, 10 years, 15 years. Meantime, all these forces that don't want to see the change are acting out. Uh, you see them in the news. You see them even in people that you know. They're acting out. They know something is happening, and they're desperately holding on to the old ways. The old ways serve them. The old ways help them maintain their, their power base or their financial base or whatever. But there's no place as we go forward. This planet evolves with a degree of chaos and, and turbulence, but it evolves into, I almost dare say the word, but into a utopia that you've always imagined that it could be, that you've always felt is very possible on the planet. And that's the path that we're on right now. And that's why you're here. <laughs>